in our uh, the series of live careers seminars powered by the online portal HOP, which is the Hertfordshire Opportunities Portal. It's what you can see in my name title at the moment. If you're not familiar with that service at the moment, really do recommend that you go and have a look at it. Um, it will give you lots of information about current vacancies in Hertfordshire and about the different employment sectors that we know are going to be growing in the county um, over the next few years. So these webinars are predominantly intended for students who attend schools in Hertfordshire, although we know that there'll be those of you watching from outside of the county and we hope the information we're going to give you will be just as relevant for you. We hope to inform you about the different types of careers within a particular industry, to let you know about the little routes that you need to get into that industry and hopefully this will act as a bit of an inspiration for you. It may help you in some of your subject choices and just might help you point you in the right direction as we go forward. So this week, our um, webinar is all about careers in the IT industry. So IT is a very broad um, description there. So we're going to cover IT from two particular parts. So we're going to look at the creative elements of, of IT. I'm delighted that Sylvan from a company called CyberDuck, who are based in Elstree, is going to talk to us about some of the careers um, or his career and the work of his organization in creating some, some software. And then the rest of the faces you can see on here all work for a company called Computer Center, which is based in Hatfield. It's a large multinational corporation with offices all around the world, actually. Uh, but they have got a very large base in Hatfield. And we'll be able to hear about some of the opportunities that they have um, as well. For those of you watching live at the moment, we do encourage you to interact with us. So you have got the option of asking some questions directly to our panelists. You can do that through the questions tab on your dashboard, and then we will signpost those questions to them. All of these videos will be available via our YouTube channel. So you can watch this one back later if you want to as well. Do share it with your family and friends or anyone else that would be interested in careers in IT. When you go through to that page as well, you'll see all the previous webinars that we've run as well, focusing on different careers over the last couple of months as well. So lots of different careers are covered within there. So what we're going to do then is I'm going to hand over initially to um, Sylvan from CyberDuck. So Sylvan, could you tell us a little bit about your career and CyberDuck, please? Yeah, cool. Hi, everyone. Um, so yeah, CyberDuck is an award-winning digital agency and we're based in uh, Elstree and um, we deliver kind of a range of digital services from um, website design, branding, as well as building uh, the actual uh, software is behind it. So whether it's a content management system or a portal for users, we do all the other development as well. Um, and sometimes kind of leading to uh, mobile apps, for example. We also have a marketing team that helps clients uh, promote their businesses on Google on social media and, and, and run marketing campaigns for, for product launch, for example. So um, personally, I basically co-founded CyberDuck. So I joined in 2006 when uh, it was just Danny, our CEO, uh, in an office in Boramud. And uh, it was just the two of us then. And uh, he was the designer, I was the developer, and we've grown the agency since. So um, yeah, I come from a, from a technical background where I studied in France. Then I did some internship in uh, in America after my studies and uh, yeah, joined back to London in, in 2006. And um, now the team is uh, about 60, or what, probably 58 or 60 employees. Um, so mostly in Elstree, we have another office in Farringdon. And um, the last few months, obviously, more and more people working remotely. So we have a few team members in Wales, Manchester, uh, as well in um, Portugal and Spain now. So, um, yeah. That's us. And have you always been a very creative person? So if you think back to when you were at school. Yeah, um, actually, when, when you talk about the creative industry, I would probably call it the digital industry because it's two different, very di different skill sets. Uh, as I said, uh, Danny, our CEO and, and Matt, our production director, the other co-founder, are very creative in terms of designing and um, uh, yeah, did kind of Bachelor in Arts and, and those type of degrees, uh, talking about user experience and, and visual design. Uh, but in the digital space, I'm come from more the, the development background. So it's more about algorithm, a lot of math and science, you know, in terms of the logic of a program, how to build softwares. Uh, so I can't, I can't draw, I can't design anything, but I can write code to build softwares and and apps. Um, so it, it's it's very different skills. So the, I'm not a creative, but I'm a, I'm a technical guy. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I mean, pre I mean pres presumably technology moves on so quickly that was this always something you knew you wanted to do? Yeah, 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 very much so. But it came quite late. At the beginning, I was kind of, when I was younger, uh, uh, yeah, the two main passions were sports and computers. So I knew it would be kind of doing one one way or another, uh, kind of enjoy discovering games and playing with computers. And uh, But so, yeah, then that, that was uh, the industry that I got into and uh, then specialized into e-commerce and, and, and the more technical side of, of the digital space. And, but you're right, it is both from the creative and the technical side that the, the digital space is evolving very rapidly. So, um, yeah, you need you always need to to learn, develop your skills, stay, stay up to date with the trends. And the, the good thing at CyberDog is clients come to us because of our innovation, because we, we're already looking at things like blockchain or augmented reality, virtual reality, things that you see in, in magazines and you would, uh, sometimes you feel like, how can I apply that to my to my business? But um, we we explore the new technology uh, internally, and we learn about it, and then we can we can sell it to clients. So it is a yeah, it's very 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 innovative uh, all the time. Yeah, well, we're going to talk more about the demands within that creative and digital um, IT elements in a little while but we're going to move on to Doris now so Doris I mean, first of all if you could give us a little introduction to Computer Centre some people may be aware of you so say so you're based in Hatfield um, got some fantastic some lovely offices down there as well but what goes on inside them I'll, I'll hand over to you thank you Gareth yes hello everybody my name is Doris Rep. I'm working for a company called Computer Centre um, computer center, what is that? It's uh, normally, I would ask students at this point if they ever ordered a Domino's pizza before. And of course, many of them have. And Domino's is probably one of our customers. We have created the app where that tells you that the food is coming and all of other exciting stuff. So computer center is uh, one of the largest independent IT providers in the UK. Uh, we go all over the world. Um, these are our lovely speakers for you today. We brought um, you Matt and Oli from the cybersecurity team, uh, Bupa Hirani, who's coming from the IT engineering, and Alexander Young, who's their project, one of our project managers, and can tell you a bit more about the exciting journey. The computer Center itself, um, we have lots of partners, and lots of um, customers, and also partners all over the UK and all over the world. Um, so when you think about it, for example, somebody who sits in the NHS, um, all the computers which are happening there, all the IT system, all the hardware, all the software, all of this comes in a lovely nice package from Computer Center. We provide an NHS, for example, with all of these things. And when something is amiss and they need help technically, they can call our service centers and which are around the world. We help them out and make sure everything is all right. And of course, Matt and his team is um, keeping all our customers safe as well, because um, cyber security and keeping um, people safe from cyber hacks is always a very important thing to do. Um, these are our offices, when you see this little nice picture on the right hand side in Hatfield, but we're also of course in, in London, in Manchester, in Milton Keynes, in Edinburgh, in Reading, in Nottingham, in Birmingham. So, pretty much all over the UK, where you can end up traveling in between or working from, which gives our employees a wonderful wealth of flexibility. And of course, um, if you like languages, then we also provide um, international opportunities all over the world. Our other very strong offices are in um, Germany, for example, or in the US. We have lots of offices as well. We have some in South Africa. In, in the Netherlands, in Brussels, in France, it's a very big service center in Spain. So pretty much all over the globe. Um, so if you start with us in Hatfield, it doesn't mean necessarily that you stay with us in Hatfield, which can be exciting because we want to we wanna be young, we want to explore the world and see things and have possibilities. Speaking of the possibilities we can offer young people, um, definitely the apprenticeship program would come to mind. Our apprenticeship program would give you the opportunity to start even from uh, when you finish your GCCs. So the GCCs, um, you should have at least uh, um, a C in math and in English. I'm not sure what the new what the new rating for that is, Gareth, in the C now. But um, that's the thing you would have to achieve at least. And you can then start 
working for us as maybe a business administration level three. That will be a 13 months program and um, you would maybe have something exciting to do like working for um, the vetting office for the government to check that people are really who they are going through the going through all the um, paperwork they have provided. Uh, that would be a very nice entrance into the business administration world, which then could lead to project management, something which Alex, for example, does, or being an executive assistant. And of course, if you're thinking about the IT route, the infrastructure technician level three would be a very nice idea. That would be also right after your GCC is finished, or even if you want to do your BTEC first in college, um, that would be a lovely entrance position um, as a first line analyst. Uh, you would uh, probably talk to our customers, helping them and giving them technical support or um, being on site as well. And we also have uh, the IT technicians for um, engineering more in that area, which is also now available program where you probably would go out and help um, on customer sites and uh, do the IT engineering where Hooper will tell a bit more about later. And the newest thing we have is a business analyst at the level four. That is a degree apprenticeship with the University of Hertfordshire. And that means that you would get a university degree on us, free of that, in 21 months. You pretty much learn everything there is to, needs to learn uh, to be very successful, um, very medium intermediate manager by the end of it. And this is quite a wonderful, exciting opportunity. Um, so what could you be doing when you become an apprentice with us? You could do I did level three, level four. And it's just a nice way of going into the business world of gaining really valuable work experience. Being in school and being theoretically, that's all nice and well, but the business world with all the rules and unwritten rules sometimes which come with it can be very surprising and it's quite an eye opener. And where could you be working? Definitely in all our UK branches. And maybe sometimes even if you speak other languages, we might ask you to do travel with us. That could happen, definitely. And <clears throat> you would definitely learn uh, to improve your confidence, your communication skills, your teamwork and your problem solving. Something we really look at Computer Center for. And the start can be quite various. Um, the The entrance positions can happen um, pretty much all over the year, but we do aim to start with maybe February, March time or September time, depending on when you are ready and finished with school. And the apprenticeship salary starts at about 10,000 per year. But remember, you gain a lot of valuable skills. You gain a lot of uh, normally very expensive IT certificates, which you would have to pay for if you would go to university. And with us, you get them, of course, for free. If you are interested in that and you'd like to find more about our vacancies, you can definitely go on our computercenterw.com website or also go under um, the government apprenticeship website and find an apprenticeship and you will find all our vacancies there. Um, yeah, thank you very much. With that, I would give over to my, my guys from cybersecurity because they really okay. know a bit more about it. Well, I'll tell you what, Joyce, just before I just before I do that, and just before I hand over to um to, to Wally and Matt, I'm just gonna bring Sylvan back in because I know you're you, you have another meeting to go to, Sylvan. So I've had a couple of questions just come in and I think they want to find out a little bit more about your business. So um rest of you, Ollie, Ollie, Matt, Booper and Alex, you just hold on for us. We're we're just gonna sort of talk um a little bit more to Sylvan whilst he's still with us. Um so Sylvan, question that I've had come in then is um what do you do if you think you're losing your creative juices? I'm going to read that exactly as it comes in. I think that means doing the things that you do. Are there certain mindsets that you have to get into? Yeah, I think both from the creative kind of designing side of things or on the technical side as well, even in kind of writing programs and, and algorithm or building apps. Uh, you do have to get into into a mindset and, and a flow. That's what we call to uh, um, to try and be the most productive as possible. But um, I think one of the key thing is to um, brainstorm with the team. So before we actually start the work, we always speak a lot with the client, really ask a lot of questions like why do you want to do this project? What what's going to bring you? What's the impact? Who are your users? How do you want your users to perceive your brand? How do you want them to use your your platform or your websites um, 
So yeah, a lot of discussion. We take a lot of notes, and then yeah, we brainstorm as a team, and, and we agree. So the, the, we have the project manager who kind of orchestrate the whole team and uh, make sure everything is, is well organized. And, um, and 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 if we get stuck, it's all about collaboration, really. So we speak to colleagues, we speak to our, our managers, and and sometimes just getting. An input from from someone else will will trigger a new a new thought or a new idea. Um, on on the programming side, you can get stuck, and then you usually by by asking a colleague, you can resolve the situation or fix the bugs. On the creative side, it's it might be a bit more abstract, but again, look, you can there's a lot of online resources. Uh, you can read about best practices, even reading books, um, just being inspired by website in another domain, another sector, a competitor can can trigger something new. So um, there's, there's always ways to work around that. Yeah. Well, you, you've almost answered the question that, that we've just had in off the back of that one as well, which is, are most website designers, do they work freelance and on their own, or do they work as part of wider teams? So what's well, yeah, the mix? Both, do you... uh, yeah, we, we hire we full-time designers, but uh, it's usually project-based in, in an agency like us. It really depends. If you work like in computer center, you probably have a, a slightly different answers. But for us as an agency, um, let's say project lasts between one to three months, sometimes a bit longer, but that's the average length of a project where if it takes three months to build a website, the designer will design it for a month, then the developer will program it for another month, and then um, the, the testing and the project management will kind of the final stages will launch it. So yeah, you will spend several weeks on, on one project and, and do everything about it, design it, develop it, and, and launch it, and then move on to the next project, which which is actually why I love agency so much, right? It's so exciting because every project is different, comes from another industry, so you need you need to learn, you learn so much about different industries. Like we work with um, the College of Policing and from the UK government, so we understand about how they manage policing guidelines and things like that. And then we have to work on a financial application for another client and we learn about payments and security and, and data. And last year we did a project for a clean room company where it's all about keeping clean materials and again, building website to transmit that message to their customers. So, so we discover a new industry every week pretty much and, uh, and we have to become experts in it to, to design something that, that works for the client. Yeah. And I mean, how much creative license do you have? Do you have to, do your clients tend to be very prescriptive over what they want or do they give you license to, to yeah, come yeah. up with what, with what you think they need and want? So we have, we have both really. If it's, a, if it's a new project, either a startup or a new project within an existing company, we can come up with a new brand, for example. Like, so they ask us to invent a name, everything from the logo, the way the page looks. Even for big multinationals, we're, we're doing that at the moment for a gaming company that will sell gaming kind of passes to, to all the big games uh, that, that we can play online. So here we have kind of full freedom and, uh, and we can be very creative. And on some others, we have to follow their existing guidelines. A lot mostly of the government projects they have this gov.uk design standards that's, that we have to be it's very prescriptive. But, that's for a good reason. So every government website looks the same. It's very easy to understand where you are and, and you become familiar with the interface. So, uh, but again, here we can be creative on on the content and, and the way we build things in, in the back end. So all the technical thing that happens behind the scene that's completely transparent to the end user, but everything on the server, the content management system and, and all of that, we can uh, have a bit more freedom there. Okay, thank you. And then final question that I've, I've got for you is, um, that's come in, are there any particular subjects I should be learning at school if I want to go into software development? Yeah, as, as I said, it's either very creative and, and designing or more on the on the programming side and, and building apps, uh, as well as social media and marketing kind of is the, 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 the sector that overlaps and both, both, both sides need a, a good understanding of that. So, uh, yeah, if you're good on science, then uh, this, all the, the kind of web web development and even the IT uh, IT topics that are very interesting. Uh, but I think on on top of those lessons, you do need if you're really passionate about it, you need to to learn it outside as well. Like do it do it well on your free time. 
um, as a lot of kind of self self development. Even because during your career, you, as we mentioned about the innovation, you will need to continue to learn new things. So um, build your portfolio, be very creative, and, and go the extra mile. Like if the company is asking for uh, to see your portfolio, make sure it's up to scratch or whatever they're asking for. Try to differentiate yourself by uh, by um, yeah, going the extra mile and doing more than, than the other 20 candidates that we might have for the role. That would be my, my main sure. advice. Um, yeah. So yeah, so look to start creating your own portfolios. Look for any opportunities you've got. I mean, everyone watching yeah, will yeah. have, um, their school will have a website, for example. Um, you know, someone really intuitive might go and have a look at their school's website and perhaps even give advice about how that could be improved or could have a look into that yeah, as well. Exactly, just offer your services to friends and family, whether they want to start a small online business or the, the accountant around the corner. That's that's how Cyberduck started as well. We had a small small project from from the accountant around the corner, and that, that's how we learned and got bigger and bigger clients over time. So yeah, start start small, um, even if you even for free in your own time, just just do that or or build build banners like designing banners for for marketing campaigns to help. There's always ways to, even if a company thinks they don't have a specific needs, you can give them stuff that could be useful for them or, or their online uh, promotion on social media, for example, redesigning their social media banners or uh, just things like or from their YouTube channel or there's so much on the digital space that, that you can get involved with. And um, again, happy to, um, to give more specific if, if someone wants to talk about it later. Okay, all right, well, Sylvan, I think that's all the questions we've got for got for you so really appreciate you joining us uh, this afternoon yeah. um, so yeah so thanks very much and then we'll we'll focus now we'll go back to um so i think it's to, to ollie who's going to start talking to us about the cyber security elements um, within computer centers so ollie if i hand over to you yeah i think matt you wanted to go first and you yeah yeah apologies uh we were going to do this sort of a one two um i i haven't got any any um slide materials but ollie has so i'm going to just give you a quick brief introduction if you like to to myself and the area that i work in if that's okay and then um i will hand over to ollie shortly afterwards if that's all right i won't i won't be long um so i am matt milson hello um i manage or i am the cyber defense center manager um for computer center based out of hatfield I work with Doris, uh, Alex, uh, Ollie, and, uh, and among others. Um, basically, um, my team are 24 by 7, 365 days a year operational um, managed security service provider. Um, we operate various different tools and, um, and solutions in order to provide um, our customers uh, security, et cetera. Um, we uh, i guess from from my perspective um i sort of I, I was lucky enough to find my way into security um about five six years ago um just on the on the cusp of the wave i think is fair to say um you now you can't obviously turn on on the news or or you know go on any kind of uh, media website without seeing something cyber related um alex said i think it's it's it seems to be booming right now. In fact, we've boomed quite a lot since the, the COVID um, or the start of COVID-19 and the pandemic. Um, this has caused a lot of fear, I think, out there in, in our customers and, and, and beyond. Um, so what do we actually do? So yes, we provide um, a state or network monitoring for various different managed services customers. Uh, we also look after their, their uh, vulnerability notification and vulnerability management needs. Um, and we also do something that is called penetration testing, which is now what I'm going to hand over to Ollie, because um, Ollie is our resident penetration tester within Computer Center. Um, and Ollie has some slides to go through, and obviously happy to field some questions afterwards if uh, if appropriate. So I'll hand over to you, Ollie. Cheers, Matt. So yeah, so hi, uh, Ollie Hawes. I am one of Computer Center's penetration testers. Um, and what does that mean, first of all? Um, so penetration testing is, uh, the way I look at it, is a good hacker. Um, if you owned a bank, you would hire a really good bank robber to come in and break into your bank to tell you where the vulnerabilities or where the weak spots are. And I basically do that for computers. Um, so it's my job to break into big uh, uh, customers' computer systems um, or solutions in order to tell them how they can get better and what the bad guys would be doing in order to break in. So a bit of background to me. Um, 
So I grew up uh, in Sussex, um, in a small village in the middle of nowhere with no internet, um, which was awesome. That's a little picture of my year seven days. Um, my mum was a hairdresser and uh, evidently she shouldn't have been. But um, So I, drew, I grew up in a little village with no internet um, and I had no interest in computers or anything like that. However, my mum said that these computer things are getting quite big. Um, you should probably learn to type. So dusted off her old typewriter that was in the loft and forced me every evening to learn to type. Um, and that's kind of where it started. I did uh, A-levels um, and went to university. I went to Bournemouth University. And the plan there was always to join the army. Um, I was going to go as a regular officer in the army. Um, but halfway through, or sorry, towards the end of my first year at university, I realized that actually um, the market in cybersecurity is huge. There's loads of opportunities and the wages were quite high. Um, so kind of did a shift focus um, away from that and joined uh, and changed my degree uh, in order to go into the cybersecurity route. Um, whilst on my degree, I did a placement year at Computer Centre. So I came to Computer Centre for a year, did a year's placement with Computer Centre uh, in Matt's team. So I worked for Matt at the time um, as one of his cyber defence analysts, um, basically doing, as Matt said, uh, monitoring. Alert, uh, alerting and responding to cyber attacks on our customers. I then went back to uni, had my final year, finished my degree, um, and then I came back to Computer Centre. So I joined back at Computer Centre last summer, um, again working for Matt as one of his senior cyber defence analysts. Um, and January this year, I transferred across to work alongside Matt as one of the penetration testers. And the way that I look at it is that Matt's team are responsible for all the defensive security. So defending Computer Center and its customers against attacks. I'm on the now on the offensive side. So I am the one doing the attacking, obviously under the guise of a goodie, um, in order to prove where the vulnerabilities and problems are so that we can mature um, both ourselves and our customers' um, security posture, as it's known. So, um, the next slide that I wanted to go through here is all around the career prospects in cybersecurity. Um, cybersecurity in its entirety in any country is uh, a massively understaffed industry, uh, but particularly in the UK. So in the UK, um, there is around three and a half million jobs that are currently vacant in the cybersecurity world. And we're quite fortunate in the UK that the cybersecurity market is valued at over five billion dollars US. Um, and it's widely regarded as the largest cybersecurity market in Europe. So Britain's leading the way in Europe um, in cybersecurity. However, there's still a massive void there. Um, the cybersecurity industry has uh, higher than average um, average wages. So the average salary is £62,500, which I would say entirely depends on what your role is and who you work for. Okay, I'm not saying that everyone in cybersecurity earns exactly that. A lot of people earn a lot more and some people earn less. Um, so it's all depending on your, um, I guess, your rank, how high up you are, what sort of level you're on, um, and also the size of your industry and, and the specific job you're doing. Um, and as I said earlier, there's around three and a half million jobs in the UK alone, um, which are vacant. And that's a huge figure. So, I mean, if you imagine what that creates is a lot of competition and a lot of opportunity for people in this industry. It's very easy for someone who works in cybersecurity to run off to another company within five minutes. Um, so that drives the higher salary increase that we see each year. So on average, um, the salaries for information security professionals is growing at around 14% per year. Um, and that's a huge increase. Um, so what I would say is there's certainly longevity in the career line. If you go into cybersecurity, you're certainly going to be earning good throughout your career. And you're certainly going to be advancing quickly um, and have a lot of opportunities to switch and change the type of company you work for. Um, so, yeah, career prospects are looking good in the cybersecurity world. So how do you get into cybersecurity? Um, there's, there's a few different options here. So first of all is university, and that's the route I went down. I did a degree in digital forensics and cybersecurity, and that certainly gave me a leg up when it came to getting a, a career in cybersecurity. Um, it teaches you all the fundamentals and what I would say is the uh, sanitized ideal world view of what cybersecurity is. Obviously, the real world application of that is slightly different. 
but but it certainly gives you that um leg up armed forces the next one so um the uk uh, government and ministry of defense are releasing more and more roles within the armed forces to do with uh, cyber security it's obviously our our latest battlefield i think they know it as uh, apart from land air and sea we now have the digital space as well so there's a lot of investment there um if you go through the armed forces there's loads of opportunities there to explore cyber security and potentially then come out of the armed forces into the civilian world um, and apply those principles and those techniques that you've learned there. The next opportunity or, or way forward is apprenticeships. Um, so there's loads of apprenticeships out there in the world in cybersecurity areas. They're a great way to earn and learn at the same time. Um, the, one of the bad points about uni is coming out with that huge debt at the end, which is a, a bit of a bummer, but the apprenticeship kind of battles that. What I would say is there's a, a chap who works for Matt, um, who is the same age as me, we're both 24, um we uh joined at the same well he did an apprenticeship at computer center actually uh, i went and did the uni thing we we're in the similar job earning similar wages but he doesn't have the massive student debt that i have okay and i'm not trying to drive anyone away from uni uni is an awesome opportunity and you will learn a lot um but it's something certainly to consider there's more opportunities and ways to get into it as well such as transferring um to be honest, most of the people in computer centers security division didn't start off in security. Um, the majority of people transferred from other areas of IT. Uh, and there's certainly a lot of scope to do that because a lot of the principles and the values and the things that we do are similar to some other areas of uh, the IT world. So if you join and you're in a, a separate area of IT, it could be anything at all, it could be development, it could be um, build config management, it could be anything um you there is a lot of opportunity to move across into the cybersecurity world if it piques your interest um so that's uh, another way of moving forward and, and getting into the career but what i would say is there's no correct single route there's no right way or wrong way there is a load of ways and there's some that ha they all have their pros and cons um but you've got to kind of find what's right for you and uni fit with me um so you've got to find what works for you i guess so career prospects, the what. So what do we look for in uh, young budding cybersecurity professionals? Well, there's a few soft skills or qualities that we look for. First of all, clear thinking. Okay, you've got to be able to visualize and picture what's going on around you. A lot of the attacks that we see are multifaceted in that they are very complex. And you've got to be able to visualize that and picture that in your mind and work out exactly what's going on. You've got to be able to work under pressure. There's a lot of pressure here. Some of our customers are very large organizations and potentially an outage via an attack could cost them millions of pounds a second or minute. So if we're not at the top of our game, we're costing them a lot of money. Other customers um, in some industries um, are more important um, with regards to things like life. So some of our customers um, save lives and if we are not protecting them adequately they cannot function and do their job so there's a lot of pressure but you've got to be able to function under that pressure to be able to thrive in that sort of environment you've got to be logical lots of things come and fall into various places you've got to be able to go back to that um, i'll go back to that picturing and visualizing what's going on around you you've got to be logical in your thought process and what steps you're going to take in order to defend or repel whatever attack is coming um, You've got to be analytical and good at problem solving. You will face a lot of problems in, in the industry. Your whole job is uh, a problem solver, okay? So you've got to be able to think analytically and solve problems. And the hardest thing that we find in our industry is you've got to be a human being. You've got to be a, a guy or girl that, you know, we don't mind having a chat with. You'll work very closely. Uh, if you're in Matt's team, you'll be working 24 seven. And at three o'clock in the morning, you've got to have some good banter. You've got to be a human being. Um, so that is one of the hardest things that we find in our industry is finding people that are, are, are okay people and are human beings. So that's certainly a quality that we actively look for in, in applicants. Okay. Well, uh, Ollie and Matt, that's a fantastic presentation that you've just given us there, very, very informative, and you've really brought to life and made what would be a pretty abstract concept of cybersecurity and really brought that to life. So 
Um, I'm sure there are going to be some questions coming in for you, but I think if are you handing over to Alex at this the point or to press the Booper. The Booper next. Okay. So yeah, we've come on to Booper. So if you've got any questions for um Ollie or for Matt based on what they've just talked to you about cybersecurity, do put those in the um in, in the chat now. Likewise, when you hear from Booper and from, from Alex momentarily as well, if you have any questions, do put those in as well. Just make it clear who you want to ask the question too um so yeah Booper, hand over to you then tell us a little bit more about um, about your field hi everyone uh my name is bupendra hirani uh, and ollie just saying that he's 24 years old um frightens me a little because i've actually been with computer center 30 years <laughs> this, this month <laughs> and, it, and it does mean that you know uh, i've been in the industry a long time um i started in 1990 as an engineer and um in the build department in configuration and and the team already have spoken about how broad computer centers options are from starting at a junior level and moving through computer center and the opportunities that we provide into cyber security into the is team into applications development etc so you know i i look after a, 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 the engineering division and i'll touch on that in a second uh, today i do the job as a trg technical resources group regional manager and as i say i've been in the industry 30 years and i've only worked at computer center so my first job was at computer center at the age of 18 and um i'm still here and my claim to fame i don't know if it's a claim to fame i ran the london marathon in 2015 may not look it now but i did run it in 2015 okay uh, I just wanted to cut, touch on a, a, the timeline. Doris, can you move to the next slide? Yeah. Um, so I, I didn't do A levels. I didn't go to university. And as Ollie had already said, the, the ways into our IT industry can vary from uh, the apprenticeship, from doing a basic qualification and starting at the bottom of the ladder and working your way through the industry and learning and developing is important. Uh, in any working environment, don't just stand still. Think about what your next step is and what you need to do to get to that step. So from a BTEC national uh, level three in computer engineering, uh, um, I, I started at Computer Center uh, as, a, as a configuration engineer in the workshop and continued to do the training that was provided by Computer Center, but also did a lot of the training outside of Computer Center to see what the value I'd, I could bring in um, and did a lot, of the, a lot of the technical training that um, added to what I was doing in, in uh, Computer Center. I then moved actually away from a technical role into a more team leader managerial role, which I actually found quite complemented my people skills. And from there, you know, each, each uh, segment you see on the screen, there are different roles that Computer Center have offered me. So, the company will give you the opportunity to broaden your skills, move into different departments and learn different roles. Now, um, the, today within uh, Technical Resources Group, we have around about a thousand engineers. I look after about 200 of them and the roles vary from an entry level engineer are around 25,000 pounds a year. And they are the types of engineers who go onto a customer site drop a box, deliver a machine and unbox it and get it ready for a customer. Very much like if you walked into a store or if you had a, a machine delivered at home and you wanted somebody to set that up for you, that's what the junior entry level engineers do. However, through the grading system, we can go from that level into engineers looking after data centers and that progresses through the system. Uh, add to that, we have a percentage of engineers who go out and do the training, go out and do the learning and are hungry to develop themselves and move into Cisco, VMware, Bluecoat, Oracle, et cetera, and into the cyber team, uh, which Matthew runs. And that actually then obviously starts to grow where the, the financial element, you know, you start from a 25,000 pound a year role with all the technical and training and the qualifications you can get you can move into a Cisco CCNA or CCMP environment and move into that higher salary bracket. What I do advise is it does require you and uh, to, to want to learn, want to evolve, 
uh, and want to develop and move forward within the business. Okay. Um, yeah, next day. These are just some of the roles within the IT industry. So you're not limited. What I do advise is think of something that's a hot topic at the moment. Clearly, cyber security is something that we've talked about, but there is also Cisco, you know, everything moving to the cloud. You need to think about that as well. Once you've decided that this is what you want to move forward in, I would suggest that you go out and learn and start getting the training and the accreditation to develop in that particular uh, field of engineering and then move into there. Now, there are opportunities outside of Computer Centre, obviously, and we want to try and keep people at Computer Centre, but the wide industry, aerospace industry, uh, do take on a lot bigger, bigger uh, engineering roles and there are opportunities out there. So it is a good time to, to start getting into that mindset of wanting to become into the IT industry. And we're not going to cover off career prospects or, how, or what kind of person we're looking for, because Oliver has already explained that it is a people person, it is a value add person. Our industry, we meet people and uh, are people oriented every single day. And that's what we need from you guys. Okay, and that's it. Any questions as I say at the end, we'll go through that. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, no, I'm sure we I'm sure we will do. Although you're explaining the industry so well here, you're probably answering the questions before they before they come in. Um, but yes, Alex, over to you then. Good afternoon. Hopefully I'm audible. Um, brilliant. So yes, hello, my name's uh, Alex Young. I've been with uh, Computer Centre for about three years now and I work um, in what's known as the Projects and Programmes Practice and I work as a project manager. So um, it's a common term banded about, but uh, if you ask a lot of people on um, what is a project manager, they really struggle uh, to answer. And sometimes actually I still struggle to answer, to be honest. Um, so, so let me give you a few attributes. What do we do? So we are, uh, we are a plate spinner, if you like. We are a project is a temporary, uh, a temporary uh, structure, a temporary um, organization, it's, it's delivering change. Um, and you need someone to lead that change. Um, we don't tend to be doers. So for example, I have the pleasure of working with uh, Matt and Ollie. Uh, on a project at the minute. Um, I don't have the technical expertise to, to perform the changes, but I work with, I have an understanding of what needs to be delivered and I work with, with Ollie and Matt to understand those changes and make sure they're done to, to time, uh, uh, when we say we're going to do them and we stick to things like cost and we stay within scope. Uh, there's usually a pyramid actually what we try to control which is is it on budget is it being done on time and are we doing what we said we were going to do um, so I will sit I will sit usually uh, in between those who actually do the work and those who have asked for the work so um, like like a, a middle party or a glue that sticks um, sticks people together. So a lot of what I do is keeping people who are interested in what's going on in, in those projects updated so they know what's going on. Are there any problems? Say I've asked Ollie to do something, he's having trouble. Usually he would pass on an issue or a risk to me and then I would engage the appropriate people to try and work out how we're gonna fix that, how we're gonna resolve that. So I look back at the end of the day and uh, what have I done for the day? Usually it's a lot of emails and a lot of conversations, but that's okay because while I might not have physical evidence of something I've done, it's that, it's that enabling everybody else to do the job they need to do. Um, brilliant, I'll go on to the mind control of the slide, brilliant, there you go. So what, what makes up a, a project manager? What, what's the sort of skill set? Well, in the, I suppose, in the requirements, there's no particular um, degree or um, A levels, GCSEs that enable you to be a project manager. You can go and study project management at university, but that's certainly not a requirement. We're more interested in the soft skills uh, that make up an individual. So Ollie touched on a few here. Naturally, you need to be uh, a team player and uh, as you go up the ranks, a leader. 
you need to be able to get on with the people you work with um, and you need to if you're pulling a load of people together to discuss an issue or an objective you need to take the lead um, uh, on that discussion and make sure you work towards the outcome you're working for um, you need to be a plate spinner you there will be a lot of things going on and you need to be able to, if you say something's going to be done at a certain time you need to make sure it does and not forget about these sort of things so organization is a big one um, you need to be quite good uh, in some cases you need to be quite good with the facts and reporting um, if you've got a complex project say there's a lot of work going on at a lot of different offices you need to be able to have that control and that visibility you need to know what's going on so sometimes uh, being quite savvy with uh, things like Microsoft Excel um, keeping uh, data and reports up to date and passing that on to um, sort of senior stakeholders is, is quite essential um, but a lot of these things are soft skills which uh, students will be developing they'll be developing almost uh, unknowingly at school and, and those are the sorts of things we look for are you organized are you a team player uh, do we like you as a person those are the things again that we look for not dissimilar to what Ollie described um, We'll go on to the next slide. I think Doris, you're still in control, aren't you? Fantastic. So I thought this would be interesting. Uh, this is a little infographic which a colleague of mine developed and I've sort of pinched it, but I thought it was quite useful. So it's a, a well-being versus success chart. So how did I, and it also illustrates how I got into project management. So go back 2016 and I graduated from the University of Exeter with a degree in engineering. Um, and uh, around about 2016, when I came out of university, the industry that I wanted to go into, uh, specifically mining and civil engineering, uh, just went down in the gutter and there were no jobs. Um, so I got into a position where the student finance stopped coming in um, and I needed to get a job. So the first job I had out of university was um, counting people getting on and off of buses, effectively. I put traffic surveyor because it sounds a bit posher it wasn't uh it was counting people getting on and off of buses but that was very short term and during that time i was starting to do a lot of reflection okay um there's not a lot of jobs in my industry but what am i interested in and it came down to actually just putting uh, the word graduate into a lot of uh, job, uh, the, the typical job uh, sites so things like indeed milk round um what put in graduate what comes up and all sorts of things came up there are so many jobs out there which just need uh, which just ask for a higher education degree it doesn't matter what it's in um, then again looking for those soft skills that you develop through uh, school and college and higher education so I came across uh, an adver um, advertisement with computer center for um, graduate um, I, before that, I'd spent six months working as a graduate civil engineer, hence the hard hat uh, down in Cornwall. But I wanted something a bit bigger, bigger organization, larger prospects. Um, didn't know anything about IT. Thought I'd get kicked out of the interview on, in the first five minutes when they asked me what I knew about IT. But it's not about that. You learn about the industry as you go along, but it's more about you as an individual. Do you possess the soft skills? Do you fit in with our company culture? And since then, you'll see the, the success and well-being. While it's cycled around a bit since I've been at Computer Center, it's constantly on the up and there are constantly challenges. And the beauty of a big company as well is if you don't like the situation you're in the company will work with you to move you around into something you do um i'll go on to the next slide if that's all right doris superb so uh, i thought just just as i've talked high level it'd just be interesting to talk very briefly about an example of a project i've worked on so back in 2018 i operated as a deployment manager um, and that was working with a lot of engineers under Booper's team uh, so for example uh, a typical bread and butter piece of work computer center do is um, end user device rollouts so a particular customer still working on windows xp was moving straight to Windows 10. So you're talking about a technology jump of best part of 15 years. But they had over 100 offices. It was over a two million pound piece, um, a two million pound 
project and I was assigned uh, a work stream of about 20 different offices um, and there would be a number of, of desks where all the computers, uh, so monitors, mice, keyboards, computers all had to be ripped out and replaced with brand new Windows 10 devices and we had to train the customers, end users, those people who'd be using the computers, how to use them because 15 years of a technology jump is, is quite stressful for some people. So that was an example where I was moving around all over the United Kingdom, meeting engineers from Booper's team and working with them, working to a plan and say, right, if we've got a five, a, a five floor building, how are we going to work through that best to, a, to, to remove and replace 200 uh, desks uh, in five days? Um, so again, a fascinating, um, a fascinating piece to work on, and just a typical example of something I got involved in. Okay, I'll move on to the next slide, Doris. I think I've got one more. Brilliant. Here we go. So uh, working as a PM comes with, as with any job, it comes with um, a lot of pros and a lot of cons. Um, so for example, I mentioned job variants. Um, there, I've been I've been fortunate enough to work with a number of different customers, um, computer center customers, um, and those customers come from varying backgrounds. So we have we work with organisations in retail, public sector, i.e. government, uh, banking, uh, finance, uh, to name a few. Um, so the opportunity to travel to lots of different locations and meet lots of different people is is really exciting. Personally, for me, is very exciting, and I know will be interesting interesting for quite a few people um, and being able to see um, everybody needs IT nowadays so it gives you a fantastic opportunity to go behind the scenes um, and, and see how different uh, organizations work. Uh, for example, I mentioned that um, the rollout project, there was an example where I was working behind the scenes in Gatwick Airport, um, changing computers out there and going through all the, the doors you don't know about in, in Gatwick Airport. And it was just like, wow, you know, who, who gets the opportunity to do that? That's quite fascinating. Um, and furthermore, it's, it's a high demand role. Um, while there are lots of jobs out there which are being re replaced with automate, uh, automation and computers, um, a lot of industry experts reckon that you'll never be able to replace a project management a project manager with a computer. Um, it, having the knowledge and having the ability to bring a lot of people from different backgrounds together to deliver a um, deliver a common goal is is a skill that a, a computer just at, at, at this current moment in time cannot achieve. So the jobs are, are plentiful and out there for project managers. However, there are trade-offs uh, with the role. Um, uh, uh, usually you're are working in a role which um, you have accountability and responsibility, you are responsible for that outcome. So sometimes to get the job done, you can be working long hours, you can have a lot of uh, responsibility uh, at certain stages, you might have extreme deadlines to meet to, um, so there can be a lot of stress about it. Uh, sometimes you'll be on roles which send you around the place. As I mentioned, travel is good, but sometimes you can spend a lot of hours in a car or on a train. Um, so there, there are compromises to be made sometimes. And sometimes customers can just be difficult. Um, and because they're the customer, you can't tell them that they're being really difficult, even though you want to. Uh, so that sums it up. I think that's my last slide. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Yeah. Thank you. That's a very good presentation across across all of you there. Um, I think you've covered lots of areas of your own personal journeys and the jobs you're doing. So we've had some questions come in. I'll, I'll try and direct these to the to the right people. Um, the first one that you're probably all going to be slightly biased with this one. So let me ask Doris this one. Um, which bit of IT is the most fun to do as a job? The creative side that Sylvan was talking about or the engineering or the cyber sides of it? You're asking me as a non IT. <laughs> um, I personally, I find the cyber security very fascinating. I mean, as I'm not from IT background, I can only see it as an observer, but it's always kind of exciting to kind of puzzle things together and yeah, to, 
paint it almost like a picture which makes sense in the end and yeah you can help people with it and you can keep people safe i think it's it's almost like a game against time and i find that very exciting but maybe the others yeah up. okay it really well as well. i'm sure ollie and matt would probably agree with that one um a question for alex as a project manager do you think you will stay working for an it company in the future or do you think you'll come work in a different industry being um i mean fairly early on in my career the i'd like to say the options are endless what's quite fortunate about a pm is the skills um the transferable skills between industries are largely the same so we're very fortunate in Computer Centre, there are standard accreditations uh, which they will train project managers up and those are standard accreditations which are not just recognised in IT, you can take them across, you can go and work in civil engineering for example, construction, uh, business change, um, the possibilities are endless. Uh, me personally, I, I very much enjoy working for Computer Centre and while the opportunities, while there's uh, endless opportunity and opportunity for growth, um, I see no right reason why I'd want to move on. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question that I've got is, well, I'm gonna ask this one to Booper. You, on your presentation, you showed the range of different jobs that were in IT. And there was you know, quite a long list. There was probably 30 or 40 different specific roles in there. How many of those exist at Computer Center? Uh, you're looking at around 15 to 20 easily. Uh, I look after the lower end deployment type of engineers that Alex talks about. Then you've got the cybersecurity team and we also have uh, the consultancy team that are very niche into the Cisco, into, the, into specific products as well. So from that list, at least 20, 20 roles would be quite comfortable sitting into uh, Vida Center. Okay, and then another one for you, Booper. Um, I want to be a computer engineer. What courses should I be doing? Now, I don't know whether that refers to an A-level or whether we're talking about university here, but I, I, I mean, the message coming across and very much of, from all of you was it was around some of those soft skills that you've got, but presumably there are some subjects that are going to help you learn a little bit more about the, about the, about the industry. Yeah, absolutely. So if you're looking at, at a GCSE level, computer science would be one that you'd pick straight away. It doesn't just focus on the IT element of it. You're talking about engineering, you're talking a lot of different varieties that as you move into A level and university, you can start being more specific. A levels, you can continue doing computer science. You can pick up physics and engineering as well. And then at the university degree level, you can actually now start to do things like cybersecurity or Cisco or VMware. As a, as a kind of a degree accompaniment to, to normal training. The key message, and I think Sylvian said it right at the beginning, is do something that bad, adds value to your CV on top of all the formal education you get as well. And that's something that a, um, an employer looks for more than anything else as well. Okay, thank you. That sounds like a good answer. Anyone else got anything they wanted to add to that? Maybe on, on your side of things, Matt? Are there any subjects or perhaps not subjects, are there elements of subjects or different curriculums that would be useful to, to know more so, about? I think I think Ollie will know better than me in terms of he's come through the whole the whole university system and uh, similar to you, Booper, I did not. Um, however, I mean, from a, I would echo Booper's uh, sounds around the whole computer science thing uh, within college and, and, you know, and, and GCSE level. Um, Ollie, from a from a productive level more than that what what would you suggest yeah I mean, by no means is it a requirement at all but mm. i think something that does stand you in quite good said it's very niche but in my role in penetration testing um and the sort of more senior guys in maths team as well as any sort of digital forensics teams a level maths whilst the actual maths that you're learning is not probably applicable it's not but the, the methodologies and the thought processes that you go through and that logical thinking, that will certainly help. So I remember back to when I was doing A-level maths, um, certainly some of those processes and the ways of thinking are totally applicable. So it's not a requirement and by no means do you have to have A-level maths to be in 
IT or in cybersecurity. But the ways of thinking and training your brain almost to think into in that sort of way does certainly help. I think I think as well, okay. just to add to that, sorry, quickly, is that there are quite a lot of um, universities now offering cybersecurity degrees. Um, I think sort of you re you rewind five, six years ago, there was a handful, whereas now I think it's it's more commonplace and it is being recognised, obviously, as a, a booming industry, if you like. And uh, as such, there are plenty of degrees out there, I believe, or, or places for these degrees to be snapped up. Yeah, and I mean, there was a question came in about which universities are, are the best to go to. I mean, that one came in as Ollie was speaking, so I assume it's about Cypher. Just Ollie, which uni did you go to? Just re remind us. I went to Bournemouth, uh, nice beach, and uh, you know, stuff like that. So, <laughs> so, yeah, there's loads of unis that do uh, cyber security courses. Um, what I would say is look at league tables, um, not just for uh, the uni, but also the course. Uh, because Bournemouth as a university, I think it was rated, sort of, you know, not low, but I think like 60 or something or like 40s, I think, overall. But in cybersecurity, it was number three. Um, so look at it from both angles. Um, but again, the, the university itself doesn't matter as much. It, it's more what it's produced in you after. So certainly when you're looking at uni, if you, you are looking at uni, Take into account the environment, the place it is. Um, is that somewhere you want to be living for four years? Um, as well as how well the uni is. But really pay attention to the course content as well. So lots of degrees um, are offered as cybersecurity degrees. But really look at the modules you'll be studying because they differ massively depending on which university you go to. A lot of them focus on the application programming um, and software engineering side which is totally a very valid part of cybersecurity. Um, but not many of them focus on the networking security and the physical security. Um, so try and find something with a good mix, unless you know specifically you want to go into a certain area, you know? Sure. Okay, and then I think this is the final one of this. Sorry, two more questions. One, I think quite specifically about cybersecurity. So one for Matt or, or Ollie here. And it was really quite, quite mind blowing to say that there is you know, that many vacancies or there's that much of a shortfall for people in cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. So do companies have their own cybersecurity teams internally or do they rely on companies like Computer Center to do it for them? So both. And is there a trend um, on one of the yeah, other? There's a health, there's a healthy mix. Um, I mean, if you were to look at Computer Center our, ourselves, so one of our main customers um, is Computer Center, funnily enough. Um, so we, we provide support for ourselves. Um, I think it's fair to say, like Ollie just said, there is a healthy mix. You will often, what you often find is is they may um, outsource to people like us in order to go and build the solution, um, and then three, four, five years down the line, once the contract's matured and and the service is matured and the processes and all all the nitty gritty boring stuff, if you like, that has to be put in place um, is done then that's kind of when we see it being sourced a little bit and taken back in house um, or some people just throw a lot of money at it and 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 build it from scratch themselves in the first place there's there is no real pattern or trend to it i think it's fair well, to say um, but go on ali yeah so what what i'd say is there's certainly trends and we see sort of a lot of companies in housing and doing it themselves and then suddenly realizing oh no this costs a lot of money or i've got to find these people with the right qualifications and skills and it's not possible because there's not many people out there. And that's one of the great things. So working for a company like Computer Center, and we have, I think now just in our area, we have about 27 customers in total. Um, a lot of these customers are, they, they can't find the people, the resources, the challenge. So they come to a, a managed service provider like us, a shared service where they get the right people and it's none of their risk to take. Um, so, and that's one of the great things of working at a company like Computer Center, the uh, diversity of our customers and the industries they're in and the challenges they face mean that every day is a school day for us. So every day we learn something new and every day I'll come home with a headache, which is an awesome thing to say actually, <laughs> because every day is a challenge um, yeah. because the customers are so different. So. Okay, and then well, a question that just come in here um, for Ollie. What's the worst slash most interesting thing you found um, whilst trying to sort out a cybersecurity problem? Now, obviously, that you could be yeah. quite sensitive with, uh, with with what you say, but generally, is there something you could you can tell us? Uh, 
yeah, it's not very technical. Um, there was one place we went to where they left the door unlocked for us, so we could just walk in and um, effectively unplug whatever we wanted. Me and Matt were actually there together, weren't we? Um, we went for a the, meeting. The, the front door was unlocked. Yeah. The front door the front was unlocked. Door was unlocked the into the server room, which had all of their critical infrastructure for their whole uh, company. It's a massive UK company. Um, I can't say who, obviously, but um, yeah, within within five seconds, I could have unplugged everything. Um, so not technical, but lock your doors. Um, that's yeah, okay. we, yeah that, that, that's obviously quite literally. But when you've been going into someone's um, cyber, what's yeah. the, you know what's the, the worst hack? I think probably is the is what the question's alluding to. Yeah. Okay. So um, the the main thing that we do. Um, Nine times out of 10, the main issues we find are um, out of date patching. Um, so patch management is a massive issue. And the way that I look at it is, whenever you get an update on your laptop or your phone, it's really annoying, but you get it done. And the reason you get it done is because it's patching up a window that I can crawl through or a bad guy can crawl through. So we have found on a couple of our customers, uh, big, large UK customers, uh, vulnerabilities that are existing from years ago. And I don't know if you heard about the big Wanna cry attack, which is a ransomware attack that hit um, a lot of UK organisations, and some NHS trusts were were affected by that. Um, it's a huge vulnerability, uh, one of the most scary that we've seen in in a few years now. But there's still customers out there who have this problem um, because it's hard to do. It's hard to patch. It's hard to reach every device and fix the problems that we know are there. Yeah. Okay, all right. Well, do you know what? That's the that's the final question that we've had in. So it's probably quite a fun one to have finished on there. So I think, look, just in just in summary here, in terms of what Sylvain was talking about initially around some of those creative sides, his advice is very much that if that's something you want to go into, make sure you invest some of your time into practicing and just learning how to do um, software design. Then we um, had. Doris's presentation initially and I've got the feeling that very much the message from all of you was that yeah there are some qualifications that will be really good but it's very much about those soft skills that you can bring so that, that ability to work as a team I think has come across fairly consistently from um, from all of you and then specifically looking around cyber security I think the key message for there is that there's really high demand for people who have these skills and qualities to go and do this. It's a really well and high paid job as well. And it's really interesting one to go into as well. So if this is something that you're thinking about doing, um, then really, really go go and do explore it a little bit further. Because um, it's clearly something that we're going to need more and more people within cybersecurity going forwards. Um, now, look, guys, thanks so much for giving up your time today. I appreciate we've probably got half of Computer Centre on this on this call with us at the moment. So, so thank you, Doris, for arranging this one for, for us. Um, if anyone has any questions that they would like to ask or anything they want to know a little bit more about, when you watch this video, say it will be on our YouTube channel. So if you put any questions in there, we will monitor that and we'll make sure we refer that back to the, uh, to the most appropriate person to try and get an answer. For you. So thanks for watching us and thanks for joining us today. Thank you to all of our panelists, to Sylvan as, as well. Um, go and enjoy the rest of your afternoons and um, best of luck with your future careers in IT as well. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Yeah. The screen you can see at the bottom there, um, that QR code will give you um, directly into our website uh, where you can come and watch these videos as well. And you can also see our social media feeds as well if you want to find out a little bit more about hop thank you